Mike Weber. What I want to do is talk about objects and their relationships. Um, and what I want to give you is some examples on setting up uh, some situations. So what we're looking at is, first of all, starting off with what kind of object types are we talking about? Nagios is made up of all kinds of object types, and you all recognize these kinds of objects. And they have these interconnections. And these interconnections are important to recognize as an administrator because they can be gotchas, and they can also be powerful ways to leverage your management of your Nagio system. So when we talk about inheritance basics, We've got three things that you always want to think about. You've got the name of the object. So name, it could be template name, but it could be a service or a, a host. You've got use. Whenever you see that word use, this is a reference to what template, what other information am I going to pull into this? Now, you guys that work on Nagios Core, you can look at this and say, oh, yeah, I recognize this. makes sense to me. We add this, do this. I can recognize templates. The Nagios core people, because they work with those, those config files closer, uh, kind of have an advantage over this whole concept of inheritance because it's not as intuitive. You have to think about it. But the Nagios XI guys, this is kind of under the hood. And it's easy to make mistakes. And it's easy to do things that you regret. And so those are some of the things we want to talk about. So let's take an example. You want to monitor, uh, let's say you want to monitor 100 search engines. If you monitor these each individually, you're going to set up the host. You're going to set up those service checks or those metrics that you want for that host. You've got CPU, you've got RAM, you've got disk space. You're checking the web page, et cetera, et cetera. So if you do these individually, what happens is you have all of these local settings. This is an important word. Again, local means that it's in the host or in the service. These are things that um, you cannot change with the template. So in other words, if you put check interval in this service, it can't be changed by a, a template up above it. It's going to be controlled by this local setting. So if you look and think of this as layers, this bottom layer where you create your host or your service check, if you put settings in there, you're done. You can't change them. You have to touch that file. So if you make uh, create 100 search engines with 20 checks each, then you've got all of those. If you set them up locally, you have to touch them all again to change it. You're going to be spending a week doing that. And you don't want to do that. And it's an easy thing to fall into. So local settings, when you set those local settings, you're done. You're going to have to come back and change each one of these settings that you set. This is the check settings tab. There's the alert settings. So if you change contacts or your notification interval, any of these changes, notification period, any of these, you set them locally, you're done. So this is the first thing you have to think about. Hosts and local settings must be managed individually. Click, change that one. Click, change that one. Click, change that one. It's not a fun experience. This is not what you want to be doing with your extra time. Same with services. So the solution, we need to leverage the object inheritance. You need to leverage it to your advantage. So let's look at hosts first. That's the easiest place to start. So same illustration. We've got individual management. This is not what you want to do. So what I want you to stop and think about is whenever you have a group of devices that are similar, this is the biggest test, similar devices, devices that do similar things. So for example, Similar devices. This could be Windows servers. This could be Linux servers. This could be SQL servers. This could be web servers. You look for similarities. 
You look for numbers. So if you have, even if you have five of these, use them, manage them with a template because you can change it quick. If you have a hundred of them, you gotta use those templates. So the first thing you're looking for is these similarities. So if you're doing search engines, you know that these are similar types devices. In, this is Nagios uh, 2012. The icon is blue here. Uh, in 2011, it's orange, does the same thing, basically. But you can see it helps you recognize relationships. So you know that there are relationships, whether you're using Core or XI, you always have relationships. And so you need to think about the fact that these relationships can be working for you or they can ruin your weekend, one of the two. So you need to leverage them to your advantage. So this is where we're starting to go now. We want to manage these search engines, but we don't want them to manage us. So we're going to create a host group. Host groups, similarities. So these search engines are similar. So guess what? Contacts are going to be similar. The people that are going to fix this stuff are typically all going to be the same kinds of people, same kinds of problems. The services that you use on these hosts are going to be similar. You want CPU, you want RAM, you want the web page to know it's up, et cetera, et cetera. So these things, we're going to tie these all together into this host group. And we're going to do that for one. We're going to just say, OK, we want to set up Bing. Only set up one. Tune it. Spend time on it. Perfect it. And then drop in the other 100. Bam, it's done. If you just do one right, you only have to do one right, and then you can drop them all into that host group, and you are done. And if you want to change it, one click, they're all changed. Any setting you want to ch change, you can push it to all of them. So that's where we're headed. So similar groups. So of course, Windows and Linux, you're not using the same checks on those two. Uh, network devices. But also, when you think about Windows, you got SQL Server. Huh. So if you got a Windows Server, uh, you're using Windows metrics. You got the same disk stuff, RAM, those things you could use on all your Windows servers. If you had SQL servers, you've got specific checks you want to run those SQL servers. Here's another group. Ah, you could combine these groups. So you could have Windows template, and then you could push in your, C your SQL template, and you could, you could really push out a lot of service checks, and you just click, click, all those things are running at full speed, and you don't have to do any management because it's all set. That's what we want to talk about, and that's what we want to accomplish here. Here's the example. So you've got the Windows host group. And so you have Windows metrics. So you've got several kinds of servers here. So these Windows metrics, disk, RAM, et cetera, they're going to go for this server, which is maybe it's a file server. Maybe it does something else strange. Um, it's gonna, then you've got the IIS. And these are going to have another template. So they're all going to get the Windows metrics, but they're going to have another template that's going to push out their IIS stuff. And you've got another template for these SQL servers. So you can stack these templates together and fine tune this so that your device can pull from all these different sources and you can put it together like a puzzle and you have a powerful way to manage your resources. So this is what you want to do, something similar. Now there's, you know, design the design that works for you. But this is one way to look at it. You create a host group. These are similar devices. So your contacts, you would list them, put them into a contact group. They'd be tied to the host group. Then you create a host template. Now this is just for hosts at this point. So your check settings, your alert settings, your miscellaneous settings, this is all placed in the template, not the local settings. Then you drop your host in, connect it up to these two, you're done. That's it. It's all set. So let's look at an example. So we'll look at search engines. So here's our host group, and it's search engines. Now, you'll notice in my naming convention, uh, everything is going to have the word search engine. 